Hello, ho, ho, yeah, welcome back to another video. Yeah, and today we are doing something different than usual. And please write down in the comments if you like this kind of video. Today I'm gonna show you the game I'm currently working on. And yeah, this will be a video series based on my, the project I'm working on, the game I'm working on. First of all, I show you the actual gameplay and aspects of the game and then we will switch to the IDE and I will show you how I coded it, uh, what methods did I use, how did I organize the code. I won't go that much into detail. Yeah, the kind of the actual level of detail you uh, see depends on certain aspects. Yeah, and today I want to give you a quick overview what kind of game I'm yeah, working on, what is the uh, gameplay overall, what is the game design, what are the ideas, and yeah, let's simply start. As you can see, um, or you can't see that um, I'm working on an action RPG like you maybe know in Diablo 4 or yeah, lately now much in hype Path of Exile 2. I'm working on a low budget version of that with a significant and unique feature, which kind of, yeah, is that you're not a hero um, raiding dungeons, but more like one of the bad guys, a demon raiding human villages for most of the game. You also have dungeons and all sorts of that, but you're not the good guy. You are the demon who raids these villages and boss fights often revolve that you have to fight certain heroes or certain chosen ones, chosen heroes of humans, elves and other factions. But yeah, apart from that, it, um, it has many similarities with the actual look like. And yeah, this um, level you see here serves kind of as a hub. So here you will get your quests. It is really empty. I didn't code a lot here. Um, there are many pieces of furniture missing. Yeah. Like I already mentioned in the title, the entire game is made in Pi game or to be more specific Python because it's yeah 100% a 2D game. It's always two dimensional. So um, Pi game should be enough. But yeah, back to the mansion. Um, as you can see here, the mansion kind of uh, serves as a hub for the demon. You get your your missions from this lady here, which will be an NPC. Then you will create your own portals to different uh, worlds, which are all procedural generated. You have to conquer these worlds, these procedural generated worlds. Um, raiding these villages um, that are also procedurally generated and yeah there are also cutscenes I implemented this will be a yeah, special video or uh, one certain video I will make but if we click E here for interaction there's already a cutscene so kind of this is also implemented so if we now move through the portal pressing E we will move to another dimension another world and as you can see, indicated by the strange color of the trees, um, each is procedural generated. The colors are procedurally chosen. And yeah, at the moment, I'm kind of experimenting with the shadows. So there's a big black spot. But yeah, spotting, let's spot a village. There is one. This is a village. And here we can kill these NPCs. We also get damage. I didn't implement it, a death me me mechanic yet. But yeah, on the upper left, you can see the health bar. And yeah, we can attack these villagers. And they also drop items. Item drops will be another part, another video. And yes. Okay, pretty simple. Here, oh, here's an item. Here dropped a helmet. We have two helmets now. We can equip them, also implemented. There are also rare items, epic items, all sorts of that. 
Uh, let's move a little bit. We can now move to the next level. Here we have another bunch, another village. Yeah, there's much more to be added. There will be heroes protecting the village that are much stronger. There will be even cities. So we have now a wood biome. Um, everything is uh, evolved around trees, but there can be an entire biome which is uh, resembles a city. Now we enter the next biome. Yeah, why is here a graveyard? Because the graveyard sub biome is what I'm currently working on. And because of that, if I enter the game, I don't want to search for the graveyard I'm working on. I want to have it exactly at the start of the map. So I simply spawn a graveyard at the start of the map on the upper left. And then it's much easier for me to fix that. Okay, now enough of the gameplay. It's in, you probably know, pre, pre, pre alpha mode. So yeah. That's why a lot of things look unfinished. Now let's switch to the code. Here we are. Okay, so how did I organize it? I kind of, this looks more like Java because I have so much files and so much classes, but um, in comparison to Java, for example, you can have multiple, yeah, you can also do that in Java, but I have a lot of classes in each file and it's more like a structure uh, thing that I um, need to organize the code and to find each class. I'm organizing it in a certain way. Of course, I have a main method, um, print game starts, and then I create a game class, which is a class. I made this code month ago, so I won't be able to speak that clearly but here we have the game class after the because we in the main functions we create a game class and here we go now the game class has its own overlays it has two overlays one for the shadow with fog and all of that that should uh, so that we have some sort of obscurity and yeah we also have cutscenes if there's a cutscene in this list the game stops and the cutscene will automatically play it we have an interface which you um, saw above which is just the user interface so you can click on your inventory level pointer um, points to the level you are actually in um, and of course uh, at zero we have our mansion and he always after uh, complete, he completed a level he always switches back to zero to the mansion we have a camera um, clock because yeah this is just pi game pi game needs a clock and yeah let's switch this is the main loop it's really a lot of stuff we have our here we draw the NPCs, the enemies, the effects, all uh, functions I wrote, but if I would show each function, we would wait until tomorrow. We um, calculate items, projectiles, hostile projectiles, because the player can shoot projectiles, and the um, enemies also um, can shoot projectiles. Update transparency, I can't remember what that was. Maybe if I click on that, I will remember. There are floating obstacles which are a layer above you and you will yeah if you move towards them you will move under them you will also have something like floors and usual obstacles that you can't pass calculate projectiles yeah hostile projectiles because we blitz them and here we calculate them if um, the projectiles collide with any object they should interact with we have fudged i <laughs> made it I named it a little bit different at the beginning, but yeah, here we go. Here we um, decide, and that was at the start of my coding phase. That's why it's in the main loop. To the, um, if I will overwork uh, this code, I will put this one in a certain function in another file, in another class maybe. But yeah, at the moment it's in our here. And as you can see, it's always, um, we are always using the level pointer um, because these are always functions of the class level. Level is also an important um, 
class because each level is an object that is procedural generated. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Damage, yeah, players get damaged. There we calculate the enemy damage. Mm -hmm. Here we draw the light sources. Here we do something. Uh, ah, display flip. Here I track the FPS. And here's the clock. At the moment I work with 30 FPS, which doesn't look as good as and fluent as 60 FPS, but gives you much more freedom with resource management and all sorts of this. You can really display big levels. And yeah, that's it for today. We will, at these functions, we will have a closer look at the next videos of the series. We can look at how I manage projectiles, enemies, NPCs, all sorts of that. And yeah, with that in mind, um, I wish you a wonderful evening, dinner time, night time, whatever time it is. If you want, I can also give you a quick insight how Pygame works, how you make a really simple game with Py, uh, with Pygame. Yeah. Or how you kind of teach yourself how to do Pygame or game development in general. With that in mind, again, wonderful evening, dinner time, night time, whatever time there is in your country. See you and bye bye. Where is the bye bye button? The button that I press when I'm finished. Hello, ho, ho. Yeah, welcome back to another video. And um, I kind of messed up the intro. I really need another coffee. Hello, hello. This is not a real, you know not a real outtake montage if I do them on purpose. So yeah, I should stop that. Hello. Hello, ho, ho. Yeah, welcome back to another video. Today was a little bit, oh no. Hello, ho, ho. Yeah, welcome to another video. Today was a kind of, uh, yeah, I still have outtakes.